Hello again. We just looked at this equation. Just looked at solving a quadratic equation, of this quadratic with the quadratic equation. And we went through all the trouble of plugging it in and finding, ah, oh, there was no solution. We got a minus, a square root of a minus, which meant we were stopped. Well, there's kind of a shortcut. We can use what we call the discriminant to discriminate, really, if there's roots or not, to figure it out if there's some roots to this equation. A quick trick, if you're all asked to determine what the roots are, or if there's roots, you might want to use that first, save yourself some time from going through the quadratic and then realizing partway through, I just wasted time. Now, this right here in the square root of our quadratic equation, that is the discriminant. Our b squared minus 4ac. To determine if we have roots, we use this. So let's look at the example we just did. So b squared, 7 squared, minus 4 times a minus 5 times c minus 6. Well, what do we get? 7, well, don't need to rewrite 7 squared. We can write what 7 squared is, which is 49 minus, we determined this was 120. Well, that is minus 71. Well, if the discriminant is negative, that means there's no real roots. And let's think about that for a second. This is a discriminant. Well, it's really just a square root part. If we're getting plus or minus a negative square root, we know we can't take a negative square root, so of course there has to be no solutions. So if the discriminant is a negative, there is no real roots to the problem. I could immediately throw that problem away and say, I'm done. What's the answer? No answer. Great, satisfying feeling. I'm done, there's no answer. What happens in the other cases? Well, let's consider, let's come up with a few equations. So let's say we had um, 4x squared plus 8x plus 4 equals 0. Again, we're looking at the discriminant. We're wanting to determine, is there solutions? If we get a negative, we know no solutions. We just saw that. Well, what about this case? 4x squared plus 8x plus 4 equals 0. So b squared, or 8 squared, minus 4 times, well, 4 times 4. a and c happen to be the same value in this case. What do we get? We get 64 minus 4 times 4 is 16 times 4 is actually 64. 64 minus 64, we get 0. What does this mean? Well, if you learn about a discriminant, it means there's one real root. So there is a solution to this. There's only one of them. We've seen many cases where there's two, but why is there only one? Well, let's again think, what is the discriminant? The discriminant is this thing right here in the quadratic equation. It's the b squared minus 4ac all square rooted. Well, the square root of zero is zero. So quadratic becomes minus b plus or minus 2a or plus or minus, sorry, minus b plus or minus 0 over 2a. So the plus or minus doesn't matter. Adding 0, subtracting 0 doesn't matter. You still have minus b. So there is only one solution. You can go and try and solve the solution, use a quadratic, get the solution. We don't know what it is. We just know there is a solution. Later on, we'd go in and sub it in and figure it out. This is just to determine if there is one. But let's look at the third case now. I'm going to go back to orange. Make things easy. And let's think of a possible equation. Let's go minus 3. Let's go with z this time. z squared plus uh, 5z plus 2 equals 0. Great. Discriminant. What do we got? In this case, Again, minus 3z squared plus 5z plus 2 equals 0. So our b term is 5. 5 squared minus 4 times a, which is minus 3, times c, which is 2. So we get 25 minus 4 times minus 3 is minus 12 times 2 is minus 24. And a minus and a minus makes a plus. I hedged my bets here. I wanted to make sure I'd get a positive number, 25 plus 24, or 49. If I get a positive number, it means there is two roots. Again, we look at the discriminant, we're just told that. But let's think why again. Back to our quadratic. Again, this is our discriminant. 
this is our discriminant. So what do we get? A positive number. In this case, it would actually be 7. Beautiful. Square root of 49 is 7. Well, that means we're going to have to consider the case where we add 7 and subtract 7. Two different possible answers. So that's what these three different cases relate to. Again, we don't know what the root is yet. We just know there is two roots. There is two solutions. We then have to figure it out. This just lets us determine if there's solutions. Minus, no solution because you can't take the screw to minus. Zero, one solution because it doesn't matter if you're adding or subtracting zero. It doesn't do anything. And if it's a positive number, you're going to have to consider the plus and minus case so you get two solutions. And it is worth noting, again, I was able to write this equation pretty quickly, pretty easily, because I made a a negative. If a or c is a negative, we're going to get a real root. We're going to get a positive number in here. If a and c were both negative, then you're unsure. If they're both positive, you're unsure. But quick guess, if this is negative and that's positive, or vice versa, you know you're going to get two real roots, or two possible roots. So. A lot to consider. Maybe one last final review, just to keep emphasizing it. Negative, no solutions. Zero, one solution. A positive number, two possible solutions by using the discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac. So hopefully that helps.